okay, this is a two-dimensional conservation of momentum problem, the classic hockey puck colli uh, collision. What we've got going on is there's a hockey puck here, uh, M2 I'll refer to. So what you do here, you want to find phi, you want to find V2. You've got two equations, so we know it's quite doable. We're going to use our old trick of the trade. Ultimately, we see some sines and cosines. We want to separate them, take their ratio, we get a tangent, blah, blah, blah. We've done this before, but hey, we'll do it again. Why don't we solve uh, for sine of phi in the y direction? Uh, that looks pretty straightforward. Uh, we get we get the terms on opposite sides of the equation. We isolate sine phi by dividing by m2 v2. Let's do that. Sine phi is simply going to be m1 v1 sine theta divided by m2 v2. Let's save that. Now, let's go ahead and solve for cosine of phi by looking at momentum conservation in the x direction. Okay, we're going to need to uh, subtract the x component of the first hockey puck after the collision from both sides. And then we can also divide by m2v2, and that will give us the cosine of phi all by its lonesome self. So, bringing this over, cosine theta, and dividing both sides by m2 v2. How convenient. Um, now, if I take these, if I take sine theta over cosine theta, looky what I get. Uh, not theta, but phi. In fact, you know, you may want to do something I should have done, and that is, rather than using thetas and phi's in the same problem, if you're having some uh, trigonometric rotational dyslexia, uh, mixing up your phi phi's, I said phi's and thetas, so you know, it's really getting out of control. Maybe thetas and alphas will work better for you. It doesn't matter, it's a variable, nonetheless. The ratio of sine to cosine is the tangent of phi, and we're left with this relatively simple ratio. We're given everything we need, all of these uh, variables are actually given in our problem. So if we simply take the inverse tangent of this messy ratio, it's going to be a number for you, you're going to get phi, the angle that the second hockey puck, the one that was initially at rest, after M1 collides into it, M2 goes flying off in this direction. Well, how much in that direction? Phi much in that direction. Well, what speed will it have? Well, let me tell you right now, that's pretty simple. We'll go back to perhaps uh, the y component of momentum and go ahead and solve this for V2. You're going to find that V2 is simply M1 V1 sine theta over M2 V2, uh, uh, that didn't help, over M2 sine of phi. And we just found phi here. Once we find phi, we can go ahead, go back, take the sine of it, and plug in all these other things. And lo and behold, voila, you will get the speed of that puck. And you have just done a two-dimensional conservation of momentum problem. And you had to use a little trick. And you had to do a little algebra, but nobody had to do calculus. Nobody did any real big, you know, highfalutin stuff. I know you can do it. It's at rest, and along comes hockey puck one, coming in at speed B. And they collide, and they go off in different directions. And in this particular problem, we're actually given the uh, velocity that the initial um, moving puck goes off into the sunset with, uh, we'll call that V1. Now I said velocity, so we're actually given a direction as well. 
What we don't know and what we want to find out is the actually the speed of V2. We can find the full velocity. We have enough information to also get the angle. What we need to do is set up a coordinate system. And my recommendation is always that we choose one that makes our life easier. So why not, we're stuck in 2D this time, but why not we'll let one of those axes be uh, parallel with the incoming speed of puck one. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and call that the x-axis, perpendicular to it, therefore, is our usual y-axis. So we are given this angle, oh, I'll we'll call that theta. We don't know this angle. That angle is speed. We don't know speed v2. What we do know is that momentum is conserved. So, we go ahead and we write that down. Hey, momentum is conserved. Now, remember momentum, like velocity, is a vector. So, we've got to take into account directions. Initially, it's all about uh, hockey puck, puck one. So, let's just look in the x dimension first. Uh, initially, we've got mass one, V1, and that's all the momentum we have in the system. Now, afterwards, we've got some x component of this guy's momentum, and we've also got some x component of this guy's momentum. Just how much? Well, now we get to use sines and cosines and all that stuff. So we can go ahead and we can find the x components, um, m1, d1, actually this was not subscripted 1. The initial velocity was simply given the letter v. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, so we've got this cosine theta, and we've got the x component of the second hockey puck's momentum, which is cosine v. Now, in the y direction, initially, we have no moment momentum, which means after the collision, we should also have a total of zero momentum. Now, upwards, we've got m1, v1, sine theta. And downwards, and therefore negative, we have m2, v2, sine phi. So it looks to me like We've got two equations here, and we've got two unknowns. Our unknowns are V2 and V. I don't know either. Now, this particular problem simply asks you to find V2, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, nonetheless, we'll still have to be able to find V in order to find V2, so you know what, we might as well find the whole thing. And then instead of just getting the speed of m2, we'll also know its direction, and therefore we will have the vector velocity of that curve. So, you do a little cal, not. You do a little trig, not even, maybe a little. Okay, you simply 